hard not to like the fourth generation Mazda MX-5, a sports car the brand is unwilling to fundamentally change, and for good reason. Since the launch of this ND series design, the brand has been continually improving this model, most recently adding in a clever kinematic posture control system to the version of it we're trying here. As before, there are 1.5 and 2 litre petrol engine options for the Roadster and RF body styles, and as usual with an MX-5, anything this car lacks in outright power, it more than makes up in agility and tactility. Is there another affordable sporting car sold today that rivals the Mazda MX-5's legacy? Well, probably not. The MX-5 is special. It has rewritten the record books again and again for sports car sales and its recipe of lightweight, driver focus and simple front engine rear drive layout just has an inherent rightness about it that hasn't dated. At its launch back in 2015, the fourth generation version we're going to look at here, built upon that legacy and in the years since, Mazda has been gradually refining this Mark IV ND series design with a range of updates ultimately creating the version of it we're going to look at here. This fourth generation MX-5 certainly had a lot to live up to. The original Mark I version of this Mazda, first introduced back in 1989, borrowed its charisma from classic 50s and 60s British sports cars and was much loved, though its early phenomenal global success has proved harder to replicate in the modern era. That's partly because sales in the affordable Roadster segment are no longer as buoyant as they once were, but it also has something to do with the fact that the second and third generation MX-5 models became bigger, heavier and a touch less involving to drive. So things had to change. The Mark IV version of this machine, like the original, had to be one that would properly stir the senses and really deliver on Mazda's founding philosophy of Jimba Itai, the Japanese feeling of oneness between car and driver. So this ND series model served up exactly that, smaller and lighter than its Mark III predecessor, with a superior power to weight ratio, a low center of gravity, and an ideal 50-50 weight distribution for the perfectly balanced rear wheel drive chassis. It looks as distinctive as its Mark I originator, is shorter, lower and wider than its direct predecessor, and has clearly been created by a team of people with a genuine love for this iconic model line. In both this soft top Roadster form and in metal folding roof RF guys, it's a car that Mazda claims you'll be able to really connect with, particularly in the updated form we're going to look at here, twice improved with enhancements since launch. 2018 saw an engineering upgrade to the bigger of the two engines on offer, the two litre Skyactiv G unit, which got a power hike from 160 to 184 horsepower. Then in 2022, the brand introduced a kind of torque vectoring system christened kinematic posture control, aimed at stabilizing the car through corners and reducing body roll. So what have we ended up with as a result of all that? And does it still make sense in this increasingly electrified era? Well, to find out, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. So what's it like? Well, if you take the view that a proper roadster should feel like exactly that, then you'll have few issues with the compact cabin. Mazda says that the low set seating position and this small steering wheel free up extra space for your limbs. But the bottom line is that this ND series model is the most compact MX-5 we've seen since the original 90s version. It feels it too. Luckily, you've got this high transmission tunnel, but if it wasn't for that, you'd possibly feel a touch too close to your passenger. Even as it is, an ill-judged grab for the gear stick might see you grazing your knuckles on their knee. Perhaps that's the idea. Don't like this? Then go and buy a hot hatch. This, in contrast, is what a proper sports car looks and feels like, which is what the MX-5 has always been, a purer form of affordable performance motoring that stops just sort of the track-style extremes of, say, a Caterham 7. 
Certainly those familiar with first, second and third generation versions of this Mazda will feel right at home here. The delicate stubby gear lever, the round air vents and the driver focused dashboard with its prominent central rev counter, all familiar cues to reassure the faithful. Yet it's a roadster recipe that we're told has here been reinterpreted for a very different age. So time to punch the starter, savour the burbling exhaust melody, take to the tarmac and find out exactly what that means. As you may have seen in our introduction, two key updates have usefully upgraded this ND series MX-5 since launch. The first enhancing things beneath the bonnet and the second aimed at further perfecting handling prowess with a clever kinematic posture control system. Now we'll get to that in a minute, but we'll start with the engines on offer. Both the available four-cylinder Skyactiv G units remain normally aspirated and defiantly unelectrified. Your starting point in the range, an eager little 1.5 litre power plant, that's exactly as it was back at this Mark IV model's original introduction. It develops 132 PS, not an awful lot, but thanks to the 100 kilogram weight reduction boasted by this Mark IV design, it's still enough to make this Mazda feel reasonably sprightly. 62 miles an hour from rest, occupying 8.3 seconds en route to 127 miles an hour. You're almost certainly though going to want the larger 2 litre Sky Active G engine we're trying here. And this has been improved since this ND series model's original launch. In 2018, enhancements to the exhaust valves, fuel injectors, camshafts, throttle valves and air intakes were enough to push its output from 160 to 184 horsepower at a heady 7,000 RPM, up from 6,800 RPM. You always did have to rev MX-5 engines hard to get the best from them. As a result, this 2-litre variant's rest to 62 mile an hour sprint time is rated at 6.5 seconds, a decent improvement from the previous 7.3 second figure. An MX-5 though has never been about straight line performance. From the start in developing this Mark IV model, Mazda's priority with its so-called Sky Active dietary program was less about improving performance and more about enhancing what the brand calls Jimba Itai, that oneness of car and driver that the company talks about with its conventional models, but absolutely bang on delivers with this one. The weight of this fourth generation design has been paired back by using aluminium for the bonnet, boot and front wings, while the soft top hood is also very light, improving the centre of gravity. Much of the front suspension is aluminium, as is the gearbox casing, the differential casing and the bracing that runs down the car's backbone. The virtuous circle of weight saving means that the smaller wheels only need four bolts as opposed to five. And lower rotational masses mean that the brake assemblies can also be made smaller, simpler and lighter. All of this weight saving makes the desired difference. Flick through a sequence of corners and this MX-5 really does feel an extended part of you as you sense the sharp, direct response of a Skyactiv chassis that's not only light but also extremely stiff. Enthusiasts put off by this ND series model switch to electrically assisted steering shouldn't be. The helm here offers just as much of a bond to the bitumen as the old hydraulic setup ever did and offers complete confidence in what's going on between rubber and road. Is it as communicative as a more track orientated roadster like a Caterham 7 or an old Lotus Elise would be? Well, no, of course it isn't, but if you've been fortunate enough to try a model of that kind, then you'll be amazed at just how close Mazda's been able to get to that level of tactile response without delivering the kind of car that rides like a go-kart. To be fair, the two-litre version we're trying here is quite firm over the bumps, courtesy of the stiffer sport suspension and Bilstein dampers you get when manual transmission's paired to this engine. It's nothing you couldn't live with, though, 
and the standard setup that most owners will be happy with on 1.5 or automatic variants is actually impressively composed on poor surfaces for such a focused sports car. You see, the combined advantages of even weight distribution, high torsional rigidity, a low centre of gravity and rear-wheel drive mean that this car doesn't need the kind of over-stiff setup that many hot hatches have in order to feel sporty. It's yet another thing that'll make you more eager to push this car along on your favourite country road as you revel in the sheer pleasure of being able to rev to the red line without fear of potential consequences for your licence. This is why we think that writers who moan about the lack of power in this car have completely missed the point of it. As we've been suggesting, what this Mazda lacks in outright speed, it makes up for with outstanding poise and balance, enabling you to exploit more of its modest acceleration more of the time. Keep your momentum going along the twisty roads and you can often reel in far more powerful machinery, particularly in this pokier 2-litre model, which in manual form, along with suspension and damping upgrades, benefits from the addition of a standard limited slip differential to help get the power down. That works in concert with the kinematic posture control system we mentioned earlier, the system designed to increase stability during cornering without impacting the purity of the MX-5's handling and driver engagement. The KPC setup applies a very small amount of brake force to the inner or unloaded rear wheel during cornering, the resulting brake force pulling the body down and suppressing body roll to provide more reassuring cornering so subtly that the MX-5's engaging handling remains unpolluted. In practice, you'd probably be more likely to notice the KPC system's impact on a track than a public road, but its subtle stability improvements are well worth having. Ultimately though, this MX-5 isn't about fancy electronic aids, a roadster instead that harks back to a simpler time when power wasn't the be-all and end-all. Yes, at the wheel of this car, you'll probably be travelling through a set of corners at a fraction of the speed that might be possible in a powerful, grippy, four-wheel drive turbo hot hatch, but you'll be having much more fun while you're doing it. Of course, if you can take to the track, then that rear wheel drive configuration will come into its own, ensuring that this roadster will remain a favourite with fans of skid control. If you've an empty test track, a slightly damp surface and the courage to turn the standard electronic stability system off, it's sheer magic. The wonderfully incisive short shift Skyactiv MT six speed manual transmission is another key contributor to the whole experience, which is just as well as you'll be shunting the stubby little lever around the box rather a lot to get the most out of those revy little engines. Like the steering and the clutch, this was another area of driver interaction that Mazda's engineers worked for years to perfect with this car. In fact, just about every part of this Mark IV model seems to have been analysed and optimised. Even the ease with which you can turn in the seat and pull up the light fabric hood at the merest hint of inclement weather. You'll want to do that should you find yourself having to take to the highway in this car over long distances. Progress of that sort is hardly what you'd call refined, but noise levels at a high-speed cruise are much more acceptable than they were in the first, second or third generation MX-5s, thanks to the 30% reduction in low-frequency cabin road noise offered by this one. The installation of a partial open-close system also helps automatically raising or lowering the side windows by six millimetres when the doors are opened or closed, thereby allowing for a tighter seal to the roof when driving at speed. It's another thing that'll help convince you that this could be a year-round driving companion, compromised only as much as it needs to be. <laughs> Short, low and wide, this Mark IV ND series design is the most compact MX-5 ever made. 
for us, it's also the best looking example of the breed with perfectly balanced proportions and beautiful detailing that conveys motion even at a standstill. Now, as usual with this model, there are two body styles on offer, this classic soft top roadster and the folding metal roof RF variant. Either way, the emotive shape has more aggression in fourth generation form than was previously the case and a greater sense of energy too. But you'd always recognize it as an MX-5, the design still true to the classic roadster principles of a long bonnet, a rear set cabin and a short tail. Unless you count the addition of this test car's Zircon Sand paint colour to the range, nothing much has visually changed this ND Series design's original 2015 launch. So, as before, the sleek nose features ultra-compact LED headlamp units that allow for a low-slung bonnet with strong character lines that flow towards the edges of the swept-back windscreen. Slender LED daytime running light slashes feature at the outer edges of the front bumper, there to try and emphasise this Mazda's broad, planted stance on the road. At the rear, the stubby tail makes an equally bold statement with an integrated bumper that's positioned right up high to allow for a taller deck that will enhance high-speed aerodynamics and downforce without the need for a spoiler. That bumper dramatically tapers out to the wheels from these lovely LED tail lights. Another design highlight with a distinctive circular nighttime signature that references the original first generation model. In profile, you better appreciate what the Hiroshima brand has tried to do here with its Kodo Soul of Motion design philosophy. This ND series car is fully 105 millimeters shorter in overall length than the previous generation Mark III version, despite the wheelbase only being 15 millimeters less. It also stands 20 millimeters lower and 10 millimeters wider. Lower and wider is always good for a roadster's stance. Short front and rear overhangs deliver this Mark IV MX-5 squatter, more muscular look, accentuated by panels that look as if they shrink wrap around the car, with the body appearing to tuck into the corners. Wheel sizes vary between 16 and 17 inches, depending on chosen trim, and you'll need this top Homura spec to get these smart black BBS alloys with their emotive red calipers. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. In this case, a structure that, thanks to Mazda's clever, weight-saving, sky-active chassis and body design, has reduced the curb weight by over 100 kilos, making this generation model the lightest since the original Mark I version. On this soft top variant, the lightweight roof mechanism plays its part in that, of course. This is the kind of simple, manually operated fabric hood that a car of this kind should have. Lighter and easier to use than it was with previous generation MX-5s. Opening or closing it requires much less effort than was required with those older designs, so it's easier to reach behind you and pull up the roof with one hand. A process that only takes a few seconds. Now, if that's too much effort, the metal folding roof of the RF, or retractable fastback version, does the job in 13 seconds at speeds of up to 6 miles an hour. We'd stick with this soft top version primarily because it looks so much better when the roof's up, powerful and assertive, with aesthetics aided by the way that to further emphasise the driver-focused cockpit-style cabin, the A-pillars, the windscreen header, the door mirror trim and the seat back bars all match the dark shades of the ultra-lightweight cloth hood. When conditions allow you to retract the roof again, it stows neatly into a compact space behind the rollover hoops, celebrated by a clip-on wind deflector, the whole effect further streamlining the MX-5 silhouette. The challenge with this Mark IV design was to keep the MX-5's traditional ergonomic simplicity but match it to modern levels of quality, equipment, refinement and comfort. Does it all work? Well, broadly, yes, though folk over-familiar with the offerings of Colonel Sanders will perhaps find that the compact dimensions take a bit of getting used to as they adjust to the close proximity of the centre console, the door trim and the sides of the narrow footwell. 
Mazda claims that this ND series design has a little more knee room than its predecessors, plus a bit of extra headroom when the roof's up as well. But despite that, larger folk might still like to consider dietary plans and all will find the pedal box particularly tight, so much so that rather annoyingly, it doesn't provide anywhere for your clutch foot to rest on longer journeys. At first glance, the conventional handbrake lever seems rather to invade your personal space, though you quickly get used to it. An electronic handbrake switch would be a far better solution, though then the potential for handbrake turns would rather disappointingly be a thing of the past. Otherwise, though, there's not much to criticise here, provided you can fit in in the first place. You quickly get the whole Mazda, Jimba, Itai driver and car as one thing, the way the driving position has been created to make you feel a part of this MX-5. We also like the flourishes of aluminium used on the air vents and door handles and the way that the exterior body colour flows elegantly over the door. The sleek wing-like dash has been styled to try and create more of a feeling of space with much of its switch gear and architecture borrowed from the Mazda 2 Super Mini. That might sound disappointing, but it actually works quite well with neat design and chunky tactile stalks and buttons that create a smartly functional feel. The seats feel as good as they look with cushions supported on netting instead of the usual metal springs, allowing Mazda to reduce weight and seat the driver's hip point closer to the road. A lower driver then means the windscreen header rail can shift backwards, in this case by 70 millimeters, which in turn means the hood is shorter and lighter and also easier to package when folded. The headrests feature these compact, integrated, ultra near field speakers so as to make listening to music with the top down a much more enjoyable experience. And the seating positioning allows you to take full advantage of this Mark IV model's improved all-round visibility, achieved thanks to a 28mm lower bonnet and thinner A-pillars. True to sports car tradition, there's a stitched leather-trimmed short-throw gear shift lever with premium leather on a grippy three-spoke steering wheel that looks and feels great, but sadly still only adjusts for height and not for reach. Through it, you view three satin chrome ringed gauges, a large rev counter centrally positioned in pride of place. The drive data you'll need is found on the left-hand gauge, which has engine temperature at the top, fuel level at the bottom, and speed limit information on either side. In the center, above the odometer and outside temperature readouts, is a section customizable via an info button on the left-hand wheel spoke, which gives you trip data, a maintenance monitor, and a range reading. Just about anything else you need to know can be found here on the standard Mazda Connect infotainment screen. Positioned high on the center of the dashboard in your natural line of sight, the seven inch display features touchscreen and voice control, though it's much easier to simply operate the thing with the silver rotary multimedia commander controller you'll find just behind the gear stick. Via this, you marshal the usual stereo media and informational functions, as well as a built-in navigation system. This setup simply loves to work with your smartphone, be that of Android or Apple in genre, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems have been added in recent years, the Apple system of the wireless kind. Mazda also claims you can have Facebook posts read through the speakers and posted to you via the voice command system. Though, to be honest, that all sounds pretty distracting to us. As for practical touches, well, you wouldn't normally expect many of these in a Roadster, particularly given that in this one, there are no door pockets, no sun visor ticket clips, and you don't even get a glove box. Actually though, things aren't too bad in that regard with a shallow storage compartment behind the conventional handbrake for phones and sunglasses. And a further recess at the base of the center stack has built in twin USB slots. There's also a surprisingly deep lidded box between the seats that's lockable for when the roof's down and sits just above the stylized removable cup holders. When the roof's up, you'll also have quite a large stowage space in the area behind you where the folded fabric top would normally sit. Otherwise though, your stowage needs will be restricted to the very limited capacity of the tiny boot. 
move out back here and on the face of things, trunk capacity looks to have been a casualty of Mazda's move to downsize this car, having fallen by 20 litres from the old Mark III to just 130 litres in this Mark IV model. The Japanese designers, though, beg to differ, claiming that to compensate, this area has been redesigned for greater usability. It's actually 35mm longer and 36mm deeper than it was in that old third generation design, though there's still no option of through loading into the cabin. Still, the benefits of their rethink seem to be worth having for where the third generation model could carry only one airline sized carry on suitcase. This car apparently can take two. You could just about fit those cases in the boot of the metal roofed RF version too, because capacity there falls only fractionally to 127 litres. Three tie down straps feature, and you get a light. But this space won't ever be empty because you'll need to use it to accommodate the owner's manual and tire repair kit. The MX-5 may be quite a bit more expensive than you remember. Prices sit in the 26 to 36,000 pound bracket. Think in terms of a premium of just under 2,000 pounds if you want to go from this soft top roadster to the folding hardtop RF version. It's just under two and a half thousand pounds more to upgrade from the 1.5 to the two litre engine. Automatic transmission comes only with the two litre engine for just under 2000 pounds more. On to specifics with both body styles, the 1.5 litre MX-5 is available in the two most affordable prime line and exclusive line grades. This 184 PS 2 litre Skyactiv G model is matched to either exclusive line trim or, as in this case, the range topping Homura grade. As for rivals, well, these days there really aren't any. Caterham 7 is the only model that really comes close for MX-5 money, but one of those would be crude, noisy and almost impossible to use as anything other than a weekend fun car. At the other extreme of practicality, the kind of budget Mazda's asking from you here would also buy you a super mini hot hatch, something like a Hyundai i20N, which would obviously offer more practicality, but it's not a proper sports car. For a typical MX-5 buyer, the difference will be important. If, having considered all of that, you conclude that it is an MX-5 that you really want, then you're gonna to need to know just how generous Mazda's been when it comes to standard spec. So let's see, even if you go with the smaller engine and base prime line trim, you can expect to find LED headlamps, daytime running lights and alloy wheels of 16 inches in size. You also get climate controlled air conditioning, remote keyless entry with a dashboard start stop button, electric windows, power heated mirrors, leather for the multi-function steering wheel and gear knob, cruise control, heated seats and a trip computer. You also get the Mazda Connect multimedia system, a setup which offers a seven inch screen, navigation, a six speaker DAB audio setup with two driver's headrest speakers and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity, the Apple system of the wireless kind. Most MX-5 customers, though, will find themselves starting their search at mid-range exclusive line trim, which, as we said earlier, is the spec level you'll need to get the choice of both engines. It's also, by the way, the starting point for various limited-run MX-5 special edition models. At the time of filming, Mazda was offering one called the Kitsuna. An ordinary MX-5 exclusive line model comes with the brand's adaptive front lighting system, heated mirrors, rear parking sensors, smart keyless entry, auto headlamps and wipers, and some extra camera safety features that we'll brief you on in a moment. Inside at this level, there's black perforated leather seat trim, an upgraded Bose audio system, and an auto dimming rear view mirror. Choose an exclusive line MX-5 with the two litre engine and Mazda will throw in larger 17 inch wheels and a reversing camera. Plus all two litre manual models get sports suspension with Bilstein dampers, a front strut brace and a limited slip differential to help you handle the extra power through the bends. So you've got the idea then. Exclusive line trim gives you most of what you'll really need in this car. Still, you might like to further treat yourself. In which case, this top 
Hamura variant is ready and waiting to tax your checkbook a uh, touch further. Here, the 17-inch wheels are of the gun metallic BBS sort with red calipers, and the mirrors get piano black casings. Inside, you're spoiled with light stone-coloured Nappa leather upholstery and MX-5 branded door sill scuff plates. And options. Well, there's a range of alternative wheel choices. You'll almost certainly be paying extra for your choice of colour because the only standard shade is Arctic White. Across the range, you can opt for extra cost mica, metallic or pearlescent paint choices. Soul Red Crystal Metallic is perhaps the signature MX-5 choice. And we've got a shade freshly added to the range, Zircon Sand. There's an Eibach lowering suspension kit and you can add Baystuck stainless steel exhaust pipe finishes. You might further want to make the exterior look of your MX-5 more distinctive by adding skirts at the front, the side and the rear, along with a black rear spoiler. Unfortunately, in this country, we don't get the option of the proper competition style Recaro bucket seats offered in other markets, but optional interior niceties you can have include an alloy pedal set, a center console shelf net, and a clear wind blocker for the Roadster. You can also add a color-coded key fob and an outdoor vehicle cover to your final invoice. On to safety, intrinsically engineered into this car, says Mazda, thanks to its Skyactiv body, which absorbs and disperses impact energy to prevent cabin deformation. Twin front and side airbags are standard across the range, as are the usual electronic safety aids, ABS, dynamic stability control and traction control. There's also a bonnet designed to limit injuries should you be unfortunate enough to hit a pedestrian. In addition, MX-5 buyers get an Isofix child seat attachment for the passenger seat, tyre pressure monitoring and hill hold assist to stop me from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. If you've managed to avoid entry level trim, you'll get a range of camera safety features too, including Mazda's smart city brake support, autonomous emergency braking setup, and a lane departure warning system. Plus there's traffic sign recognition and driver attention alert. <laughs> In a small, diminutive little sports car like this one, a 100 kilo weight saving, effectively the combined average weight of a typical adult and child, is more than just significant, it's game changing. That's what Mazda's various Skyactiv design and engineering philosophies have delivered here in a car that weighs in at only a fraction over the one ton mark. A key contributor to the dietary programme has been the fundamentally redesigned Skyactiv body, which for this Mark IV ND series design gained a considerably greater percentage of high tensile steels, as well as the aluminium you'll find in areas like the front wings, the bumper reinforcements and the seat back bars. The two Skyactiv G petrol engines on offer haven't been embellished with any of the mild hybrid electrical assistance you'll find on Mazda's more conventional models, but they're still pretty efficient, aided by the inclusion of an i-stop engine start-stop setup added since launch, which restarts the engine via combustion rather than, as is more usual with these kind of systems, via the starter motor. Engine cooling is via a small light radiator and not surprisingly the base 1.5 litre model is the most frugal choice offering a 44.8 mpg WLTP combined cycle reading. This 2 litre variant manages a 40.9 mpg combined cycle return. That's assuming you stick with the crisp, precise Skyactiv MT 6-speed manual gearbox that we've been trying here, specifically adapted for the MX-5's classic front mid-engine rear-wheel drive layout. Order your 2.0-litre MX-5 with automatic transmission and the combined reading falls to 37.2 mpg. You can monitor your progress towards achieving these figures via the fuel economy monitor you'll find in the application section of the center dash infotainment screen. This incorporates an energy monitor showing the real-time workings of the car's IE loop kinetic recovery system. This recovers energy while decelerating and braking. The recovered energy 
then used to power electrical systems such as the audio, the air conditioning and the headlights to put less stress on the engine. This ND series model's light weight also pays dividends when it comes to the tax conscious issue of carbon dioxide emissions. In the 1.5 litre variant, these are rated at 142 grams per kilometre of CO2, while on this 2 litre model, they're rated at 155 grams per kilometre for the manual and 171 grams per kilometre for the automatic. Overall, we reckon that this MX-5 will cost you no more to run than a conventional golf-sized family hatch, maybe even slightly less. On to residual values, always a relative strong point with this car. The MX-5 is a favourite amongst used car buyers due to its relative simplicity, strong reliability and low cost to insure. As a result, independent experts cap reckon that after the usual three-year or 60,000 mile ownership period, this car will retain between 39 and 42% of its original value. You get the usual three-year, 60,000 mile warranty and insurance groupings pitch in at 27E for the 1.5 litre Roadster model. It's 25E for the RF version. It's Group 33A for this 2 litre Roadster variant. It's Group 28E to 32A for the RF model. What else? Well, servicing should be affordable and there's a useful vehicle status monitor maintenance section of the Mazda Connect infotainment screen, plus a further selectable maintenance readout on the left-hand instrument binnacle gauge. To help you keep track of what work's been carried out, you can access a digital service record online and use a useful My Mazda app to receive reminders about servicing, book your car into your local dealership and access a digitally stored record of your model's service history. For the final word on this fourth generation MX-5, let's turn to the first thoughts of designer Masahi Nakayama when he sat down to create it. This, he decided, must be a car its customers would want to hold on to. One that could be driven for 20 years. Nakayama imagined himself as the owner of such a machine and simply hated the idea of eventually becoming bored of it. The thought of this was just too sad, he said. I wanted this car to be a car I would love for a very long time, just as I do the original MX-5. We loved the Mark I original too, and a motif design perhaps diluted in its second and third generations, but reimagined in this fourth generation form in a way that stirs the senses just as an MX-5 should. This model's production engineering chief, Shinichi Yasui, says that in a 20 year career, he's never had such strong feelings of attachment to a car. An emotion you find replicated again and again if you read through the thoughts of the development team responsible for this model. The car they created certainly feels like one of the purest of its kind, with rear wheel drive, perfect 50-50 weight distribution and a power to weight ratio that makes the most of the substantial weight savings this shorter, stiffer and safer ND series MX-5 offers. That light curb weight is probably the most notable thing about this Mark IV model, but as we've just suggested, there are plenty of others. Distinctive looks matched with comfort, technology and frugal efficiency. Since launch, the Kinetic Posture Control Handling System and the upgrades made to the 2-litre engine we've been trying here have further enhanced the experience. The result is a sports car that more than ever will appeal to those who take a tactile pleasure from the sheer joy of driving. Not everyone gets the MX-5 experience, of course. It certainly won't appeal to those prioritising power or people needing the practicality of a hot hatch or a sports coupe. At the other extreme, a specialist sports car maker like Caterham or Ariel could offer you a more intense experience though one that for the most part would be largely irrelevant for public road use. That's where this Mazda excels. You don't need a test track, a racing driver's touch or a lottery winner's wallet with this car. Just a back-to-back -back basics love of driving. The way it ought to be.